Denver 7 Now is sponsored by Ferguson and BAC Appliance Center. The best in bath, kitchen, and lighting for your home. I'm Ann Trujillo with the latest from Denver 7. Shouldn't be as bad as yesterday's downpour, but you could still see some showers tonight. Chief Meteorologist Mike Nelson is joining us, and this system is spotty, but it's powerful, Mike. Especially over northeastern Colorado. That's where the main severe threat is. There's more humidity up there. Overnight, those storms move off into Kansas, Nebraska. Partly cloudy by morning, but another little disturbance coming into the west. Even some scattered showers over the western counties by early morning on Friday. 63 overnight at Grand Junction, 58 Denver, 57 Greeley in Fort Collins. As far as Friday morning, we start partly cloudy. That front is still out there, so storms start to develop around midday, and severe storms possible again over the northeast part of the state. Lesser chances right along the I-25 corridor and warmer and drier weather out west with 95 out at Grand Junction. That heat is going to be coming our way for the weekend. With temperatures bouncing back up into the low to mid-90s Saturday and Sunday should be dry, and then early next week, it looks great. Cooler weather, quieter conditions, a taste of fall by Wednesday with highs in the upper 70s. Very nice. Thank you, Mike. Aurora leaders must be Denver 7 viewers because fixing the intersection we highlighted this week now appears to be one of their top priorities. The crossing at Powhatan and County Line is very dangerous. Two people have died there in recent months and crashes and near misses happen so regularly we caught one on camera. But as Denver 7's Jennifer Kowaleski reports, making it safe won't come easy. We've seen more close calls than we can count since we started reporting on this story. Now Aurora says it wants to make this intersection safer, but fixing it comes with even more challenges. These flowers next to a mess of caution tape symbolize the heartbreak and dangers at this Aurora intersection. Very confusing, high speed traffic. There have been two deadly crashes in two months at County Line and Powhatan Road. Every day I pass, if I go this way, I have to relive what has happened to him. One of which took Linda Lane's husband of 40 years. Before more people are killed in this intersection, they need to do something to stop it. Since Contact 7 Investigates first reported on the confusion, and her cameras captured another crash earlier this week. Do you have a phone? I do. Call. No, it, it's... 911. <laughs> Powhatan and County Line. This is unbelievable. It, it obviously signifies a problem. The city of Aurora says fixing this intersection is now a top priority. We hear you loud and clear, and we know that this is a top priority. Councilwoman Francoise Bergen represents the area. We didn't know the growth was going to happen in certain areas so quickly, and therefore maybe different solutions would have come, um, come about. She says the city is moving up a traffic study, and we'll have crews out next week to see if a light is needed. Even for a four-way stop, you would think, oh, you just put one out there, but we have to have the data. Only adding to the red tape. There's not one, not two, but three different local governments with a piece of the puzzle. Makes it a much more complicated situation. Douglas County is responsible for this stretch and building out the road. Aurora is on this end and is in charge of the intersection, while Arapahoe County oversees this part. On top of all this, Bergen says the road will likely need to be widened first. And even if they wanted to put a light in right now, there's about a six to eight month backlog from the manufacturer. We may have to come up with a temporary solution first before the permanent solution. Aurora tells me that that temporary fix could be a four way stop. They're also planning to increase patrols to get drivers to slow down. As for why there's a backlog on traffic poles, the city tells me that the tariffs on steel are a big part of it. In Aurora, Jennifer Kowaleski, Denver 7. A Johnstown couple has won the fight, but not the war. Despite the city's opposition, a developer was granted a permit to transform the open space near the family's home into a gravel pit. This week, a judge decided a Larimer County Commissioner should not have been allowed a vote because he accepted $10,000 in campaign donations from the developer in question. So that means the vote must now be recast. The mysterious, apparently vaping-related illness popping up around the country has now spread to Colorado. The state health department tells Denver 7 one case is confirmed and another suspected. They couldn't say what symptoms they're experiencing, but others have been sick enough to cough up blood. The cases are not connected to any one brand and have been attributed to vaping both marijuana and tobacco. Wildlife officers may have captured the mountain lion that seriously injured a little boy in Bailey. It will take time to confirm, though, that it's the same. In the meantime, a family is gathered around a hospital bed following one of the most terrifying experiences of their lives. Denver 7's Lance Hernandez reports. Today, parks and wildlife crews comb the mountains in this neighborhood, tracking down two cats. We got a call from a landowner who was about 
a mile as a crow flies from the original attack site. Said he was missing a, one of his domestic goats and he had seen two mountain lions on his property. So our officers, along with the dog team from the USDA Wildlife Services, went over to that site immediately and uh, when they arrived, the dogs started barking, going off. You could tell that they sensed something was up or, or caught a scent. And then they look over and saw the two mountain lions with the, uh, the goat carcass there. Jason Clay of Parks and Wildlife says it's best not to have a wildlife friendly backyard. Eliminate dense vegetation so they don't have a hiding place. Supervise children. Understand that lions are most active from dawn to dusk. That was Lance Hernandez. Now, this has been your Denver 7 On Demand update. Thank you so much for joining us. And check back here later tonight for another update. And download the Denver 7 app for breaking news and alerts. I'm Andrew Heal.